The views and opinions expressed within the video content found on the Indie Comics Network are those of the speakers and do not necessarily reflect the views or positions of the Indie Comics Network or its sponsors. Hey everyone, it's me, Alley Cat. Um, I'm here, gonna be doing some drawing on this wonderful, bleak Friday here. That's cold and rainy and wet. I'm just very happy I'm not suffering from like crazy heat problems, so there's a plus. Uh, but that being said, I figure people probably mainly came to watch me draw, so. Let's get to it. Alright, so this is the piece I'm currently working on. This is actually going to be the issue 2 cover of, of Stray Cat, which is the project I'm working on that I'm hoping Antarctic Comics will pick up. Uh, and the... That's the subtext of A Death in the City. Uh, this is the cover of issue 1. Uh got a few minor things I gotta do with it still, but for the most part I'm calling it done. And I have the mascot of the of Alley Cat Comics sitting next to me right now being a pain in the ass and wanting attention, so he's getting it. I have the hops. Yeah, 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 I know you wanna get away. You wanna get away, you little squirming ferret? Yes, I swear. I didn't get a cat, I got a ferret. <laughs> The other one is doing what I typically do on a rainy day, a rainy cold day, which is sleep. But hey, it is what it is. I'm here for all you guys to have fun with, draw, do all sorts of crazy stuff. So, getting to it. Now, I'm using... Primarily Kyle's brushes with these, because I absolutely love Kyle's brushes. If you use Photoshop, um, you can get them. I mean, I primarily use Clip Studio, but you can get them with um, um, into Clip Studio just by importing them. So, And I love these brushes. I have a lot of my own custom ones too, other ones I've downloaded, but when it comes to drawing, I prefer Kyle's. And part of the fun part with this um, piece I'm working on is I actually did some research on it, on the actual fighting technique that um, I'm using in the comic itself. And I found an actual master of a, basically the Kane style, the Hanwi or the uh, Shizen... She's in Shima, something? I'd have to look up the name again of the, the sword. Uh, basically, the cane sword. Because hmm. uh, Zatu Ichi, the samurai movies that really um, promoted this kind of style that I was inspired by, his fighting style really isn't that useful. It's not a... It's definitely a fictional style. But it looks really cool. And that's more what I care about. But I did find an actual master who developed Kinjutsu style using this blade. So I 
studied a few of his videos and um, so I can depict the art for it a bit more. So I'm using an edging brush right now to get a bit thicker of a line for the outer edge. A lot of my inner lines, I use the his newsprint brush because I like the look of it. I like having a little bit of a textury edge to the to it. Newsprint grit. He's got a secondary newsprint grit one too, which I haven't used as much. Definitely a thicker line. that around a bit closer to the side of her face. Yeah, I think that works. Hoping to launch a Kickstarter on this maybe in November. If I can't get it off in November, I'll shoot for the new year. But I have the entire first issue plotted out, and I'm in the process of penciling it right now. Um, then I have the... Um, want to work on the cover for the second issue a bit more figured that people might like seeing it so um we go from there i still have more work to do on the background too even though i have all the texturing and everything going in excuse me um i'll have to go in and basically dirty it up a little bit. My original concept for this was to 
really kind of play up some high fantasy tropes um, with it and change a few things, but decided that I didn't really want to use the standard fantasy stuff or my the world I use for my D and D stuff basically is where I usually set a lot of my fantasy stories. I mean, they're technically high fantasy, even though they have a sword and sorcery flavor, but they generally are more high fantasy. Um, this, I don't want to thicken the edge on that. No, I don't think I do, because that's her back arm. So I thicken a little bit. Uh, but yeah, so... My main thought is to kind of add a little bit more of Eastern fantasy to it, or I should Eastern inspired fantasy. I mean, I'm definitely not using strict like Eastern fantasy. I'm taking liberties with it, um, kind of the way I do with Western fantasy tropes and things like with elves and dwarves and stuff. Oops. I do have an announcement that on the 9th of October, I'm going to be teaming up again with the wonderful Vic Medina to do the AV Squad, which is basically Vic and myself having an art stream. And if people happen to come by and uh, draw with us, then, you know, they happen to come by and draw with us. So we may have some guests, we may not. We'll see how it goes, but yeah, so AV Squad, starting on Monday the 9th, and I've been using my thicker brush for the inside of that, but it kind of works. Let's see. Hope to have um, Dave Finch on again sometime in the near future. Probably not till the new year. But uh, yeah, talk to him and see when he wants to do it again. And I do have an exclusive Dave Finch cover coming for this. Be a little bit different than the way um, the character looks in the final product, but that's because I she went through a little bit of an evolution kind of as I was going as I was doing this. Um, but it's close enough. Really, Hobbs? You want to come back onto my lap? Yeah, see, we got a tail. This cat. 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 What are you doing, young man? Yes, you. Yeah. My little pain in the ass.
who was beating up his brother earlier. Hobbs, you know, this is making it very difficult for me to do any art. I'm just saying. What's that? You want to show the world your ass? Let's see. There we go. Get down. Good boy. Oh. Come for the art. Stay for the cat. Come on, I, I know why you're all coming here. You come on, see my cats. Okay, let's see. Let's see, so in addition to having the Dave Finch cover, I also will have Ian Chase Nichols doing a cover. He has done a lot of work with um, Carissa Grant on her comic. And, um, well, he is known in the industry as an artist on The Tick. Uh, as well, he's done some work for IDW on their Ninja Turtles. And a few other places. He's done some stuff for Scout, uh, some covers for them. And he's put out his own books like Acts of Helena and um, Underwater Hero, I believe, is his current book he's working on, which is a... Well, inspi inspiration heavily comes from Aquaman, was it? Go figure. But yeah, so I'll have his stuff. And I'm working on one to two more people. And I don't want to overwhelm with alternate covers. What I want to do also is to include a sketch cover tier. So, one, people could buy a sketch cover from me, where I'll do do my own thing on it. Um, or you can order your own and do your own thing on it. But i got to look into that a little bit. I have to reach out to Tyler Carpenter too about doing it because I mean he is a friend of mine and stuff. Um, but that will depend on a few things.
Actually, let's do that. Take a little bit out there. Can't wait to take the air conditioner out of my um, window currently because it's starting to get cold enough where I don't want it there, but I know how this works. I take it out before October and I'll have heat issues with my MS. So, wait till at least October every year. How's that looking? I'm starting to like it. Let's give it a save. Everybody's quiet today. Granted, I didn't schedule the stream out like a week in advance or anything, so I'm not surprised I don't have a ton of people here right now. Those who are watching, feel free to comment, like, share, subscribe, you know, go from there. I'll answer questions, I'll talk about d and I'll do just but anything. I'll talk a bit about comic. I'll talk a little bit about the latest episode of Ahsoka without trying to give away any spoilers. Um, I'll also talk about the their I'm mostly calling it the rebuild of Rony Kenshin. I know they did that with Evangelion, but kind of getting the rebuild feel from it in some ways. I mean they are staying true to the manga, but hey. So I'll happily talk about that as well. I mean, we just finished a major story arc with it. And that should lead into the Yahiko story. Um... Kind of go from there. And then we should start to get Saito. It should be good. I have to say, if it probably wasn't for that new Kenshin, I probably wouldn't have been as happy I am with what's going on with this. 
this comic here. Kenshin is definitely a big influence on me. I got some issues with the creator, but his creation is what matters to me in that case, and it's not like I'm giving him money. I don't know if anybody's heard the news that they're doing another Star Wars TV show, but this time, oh, well, actually, it's movies. They're doing three new movies that focus on um, Anakin Skywalker and uh, Ahsoka Tano. The couple of episodes ago, they had the, the younger Ahsoka appear in the live action series, and they're going to be doing a, a show with her as Ahsoka. Say I'm looking forward to it, but it's Star Wars. I'm generally looking forward to anything in Star Wars. Um, I really don't like the prequel era, but... Eh. I'll see it. And that's all that really matters. So far, so good, I think.
I got, let's see. Hmm. When I go to do the Kickstarter on this, um, depending on how it goes and how everything kind of works out for me, I'm hoping to kickstart a few of the other things that I have done. For instance, my last Sentinel comic. I'd like to kickstart that and get that going. Um, and uh, I have actually another like two or three that are done. Um, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go with this one first, just because I have an alternate cover already done by Dave Finch. So that's kind of a big deal. Um, the other reason I'm, I need to make sure that I have everything straightened out with um, my disability, so I don't destroy myself trying to make comic books. I guess that'd be very much a manga cop of me. shape. That's what I was looking for. It's the thickness here. 20. Does sound right? 4? Hmm. Yeah, it's running off 10. I'll do a 10 if needs be. I can just shrink it. I think that'll work. Thought that might have been too thick at first, but the way it rendered it, it kind of works out fine.
Let's see. So a lot of manga has his own influences on me, which there are, and a, lo a lot of, um, there's definitely a lot of American artists there also, um, call it Western artists that are also influenced on me, but what I notice more and more in a lot of ways is, um, he's been layered. With the way I tie knots on belts and stuff like that, or if I do things with like a bandana and I show the knot, I basically stole it from the original Turtles. Definitely not considering that a bad thing, considering Turtles is one of my favorite pieces out there. I admit I'm more just... I'm, the classic Mirage one is the one that really matters to me. Apparently. Uh, the um, the latest IDW stuff has been good, but it's just not my turtles. So I think I just love the goofiness of the original Mirage run, particularly like the first ten or so issues when they were really working on them together. Together, and they did the return uh, return to New York storyline, which I really loved. In City of War. See, so yeah, I saw the new Nun movie. That was entertaining. I don't generally think of it as really that good, but it was entertaining. I enjoyed myself overall. And they had a definite, like, stinger moment for the fourth Conjuring film, which may or may not be good. I mean, third Conjuring, Conjuring movie I kind of thought sucked, but... Hello, Tapani. How are you?
hope all is well with you. What's going on here? I am working on a cover. This is the cover of issue two, Stray Cat, uh, which I'm preparing for a big submission to Antarctic Press. Had a good conversation with Ben Dunn. He encouraged me to submit to them, so I'm going to be doing that. Glad to hear you were good, though. I think that was very good. Now, the other brushes that I use a lot are uh, for inking and stuff is I would heavily recommend Jimmy Reyes's brush set. They're quite good. And since he is an inker himself, he really messed with the brushes to get what he wanted. So they gave you a traditional feel. So those are another set of brushes I'd recommend. So I spent this week basically laying out a 24-page comic, which I have all the layouts done. Still working on the actual art, but the layouts are done. I'll probably be penciling that when I'm done up with streaming tonight. I don't really want to work on that on stream. don't want to give away spoilers. I want people to buy it.
Oh, I think they found me. I will say that one of these days and a cop's going to bang on the door. Probably for no reason, but, you know, aside from to check on things going on in the area, if there was something, but it would just be funny. You know, way too boring. For them to show up for any interesting purposes. Even still, I think that was an ambulance. Uh, police cars around here have a, it's like a wobbling siren. That's the only way I can really describe it. Highlights on the, her hair, but I'll do that last. Probably after I color it, actually. Should be working on your own comic, but this seems easier right now. Um, I can respect that. I truly can respect that. What's your comic about? Mine is about the adventures of a blind sword girl, sword wielding girl. Very much inspired by pieces like Sato Ichi. Her name is uh, Sishichum Rin. Uh, well, Sishichum uh, Isigaram. Or Rin Blade Leaf, as she's commonly known.
What would my genre be? Um, it's a fantasy story. Uh, it's not traditional fantasy. It has elements of some Asian fantasy in it, along with Western. It's very much an East meets West kind of storyline. Um, it's set in a city that is similar to um, Nagasaki during the Sengoku era. Um, when the um, Portuguese were there and doing trading with them before Japan expelled them all. Uh, it also has some influences from um, the late 1800s when the Black Fleet came to Japan. So it's this trade city, or the city of borders. Think of it kind of on the Silk Road. Uh, in some ways, it shows a little bit more of a, I would say, historically speaking, be more like Shanghai um, rather than like Hong Kong in the sense of where the British just kind of took over Hong Kong for like 100 years, where Shanghai was definitely uh, had influences from other other countries, but it was primarily still controlled by China. Um But that is the basis of it. Uh, so it's like a sword and sorcery kind of fantasy. Uh, it definitely has high fantasy elements. Um, Final Fantasy has some influence into it uh, with the way I'm going to be doing some things with it. Uh, it's definitely like the tech level of it would be more of 1800s, more late Victorian. Uh, but it shares a few tropes with some typical shonen fight manga. Um, it's not like I don't really have any plans of doing tournament arcs or anything, but I like certain elements in fight manga. And it would also have it has some influences from things like Attack on Titan and stuff, but Bernie Kenshin is a big influence on it too. So that's same kind of all over the place when it comes to what genre. Um, for instance, there is an entire episode that is very much horror, but I mean horror you add on to whatever genre you're working with. But there will be an issue that is going to be very, very horror oriented. That was a bit inspired by something from one of the Thief games. Some of my favorite video games. Hmm. Some problems for having genre of mine and something like crime thriller slash sword and sorcery. Well, that sounds interesting. I mean, I'm all for that. Crime story, sword and sorcery. That just sounds cool. Oh, really? Really? Yes, you? I see you. All right, so we got the other cat now who had been sleeping. Mm, yes, he's my lovey cubby. I love him to death. How long until he attacks my hair? Yeah, I love you too. Always thinking about it. I just better move the hair before he goes for it. Oh. Oh, he will. <laughs> Don't do it, cat. Yeah, he's, uh, he definitely was thinking about it, I could tell. Uh, that is the other um, part of the managerial staff of um, Alley Cat Comics.
That is definitely an ambulance. I'm almost getting to the point that I know what brand of ambulances they are. Just from I live next to a hospital, so I hear them constantly. So I'm getting I'm starting to pick up the different brands. Any first person panels in the comic? I heard that's the best part. <laughs> um not in the first issue, no. Um yeah, I was inspired by the more of the storytelling aspects of it, but yes, um Thief the Dark Project, Thief the Middle Age, and Thief Three definitely have some influences on me with this. Uh The horror story that I have the inspiration from is from the third game. Which, if anyone's played the third game, they know the level I'm thinking of. Kind of inspired me a little bit. No, I'm not going to put you on camera if you're licking yourself. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I see you too. Yep. Tuxedo may be back in a moment. Every food makes the same... Oh, yeah, it does. Well, you know. It's a game from the late 1990s originally, in the early 2000s, with um, Thief 2, so yeah, I can forgive a lot. Yep. You're up to no good. Oh, I can tell you're breathing. What? Yeah, you. He's thinking about you. Yeah, I don't really play a lot of PC games. I mean, I played Skyrim on PC when it first came out. Um, and uh, played some of the Fallout stuff, but yeah. Well, I mainly just do pen and paper now myself. I mean, I do have um, I do have Shredder's Revenge, and I love that game. And I got Street Fighter VI. And I've been told I sh can't buy um, Baldur's Gate Three. Because it may or may not show up as a Christmas present. So. No, I'm not feeding you. You have been fed. You had your lunch. It's not dinner time yet. No, 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 no. This is my hair tie, not yours, you little shit. Yes, come for the art, stay for the cats. <laughs> and how they drive me bonkers. Yeah, you. Things cats make me do. Uh, there is a Street Fighter RPG. I've run it and played it. Oh, it's old. It was actually made by White Wolf. Um, the same group who made The World of Darkness. Uh, they even made a... Um, 
was it a um, expansion to the world of darkness that put in the Street Fighter combat system. I am a huge mage fan. Mage is my favorite of the classic White Wolf games. Followed by Werewolf. I have a soft spot in my heart for Changeling and um, Wraith. Vampire I actually like the least. No, the one I like the least is Hunter. The one I've run the most of is probably Vampire. But... but Mage is my favorite. I have a whole um, World of Darkness setting that I ran in for years that different campaigns influenced different things that happened in it. Yeah, nowadays especially. I mean, I know they're planning on bringing it back, but the game's technically been dead for like over 20 years at this point. Chronicles of Darkness stuff. Yeah. The less said about that one, the better. Had some interesting ideas, but... Yeah. Not my mage. Uh, I read all of them. I'll say that uh, the the Changeling one that they did was actually probably the best one. I mean, it was, it was supposed to be one of the mini series games they did, and they ended up turning it into a full on game because of how popular it was. That one was probably the best of um, the New World of Darkness stuff. I like Prometheus a lot. Uh, I thought it was an interesting idea, but all in all, it kind of failed um geist was written very well enjoyed that one I mean, that being said, there were definitely stuff that I found in Mage the Awakening that I thought was interesting, but it was, uh, I don't know, badly done in certain ways. I need to get the new 5th edition werewolf game that just came out. It brought back the classic World of Darkness, but that involves money. It's 
somehow very American history-ish to me. Mm, what do you mean? I mean, it's written by a bunch of American people who live in Georgia, so uh, it kind of made sense in that way. Awakening? I mean, again, it was written by a bunch of guys who lived in Georgia. Um, so, sure, but I'm uh, not really sure what you mean by American history-ish. Um, I mean, you had the whole Atlantis thing, which goes back to Plato, so... Their interpretation of Atlantis was a little weird. I did like the idea that you had to engrave your name, like carve your name into like one of the, the watchtowers. I thought that was interesting. No, oh, could be that. World of Darkness stuff that I ran the most is that I ran the classic, but I mainly ran like, the stuff I really get into was when they did the Year of Lotus, where they made all the Eastern werewolf and vampire stuff. I ran a very long set of games set in uh, Tokyo. Tokyo and uh, Kyoto. So the party had cross paths with the beast courts and all that. Well, the party was the beast courts in the uh, in the werewolf one. Had a couple of Haken, had a glass walker. Uh, had a dragon. Kitsuni. Had a, uh, it's a Tengu. And a couple of rats. Which throughout the game we refer to one as smart rat and one as dumb rat. Our local game in northern Finland characters are mostly different types of Finnish folk magicians. That's pretty cool. That just sounds kind of fun. I'd probably play in something like that. Fix her toes. Yeah, only thing I've basically been running lately has been D and D. So, uh. I 
I run a, actually I run a couple of games at a local game store. I run one on Sunday morning, oh, Sunday afternoons, and then I run one on, starting to run one on Monday nights. I also do a rotating game that's a, um, on Tuesdays, I'm taking a little bit of a hiatus because I need a break, um, where I run a system that's not d d on Tuesdays. And I've run some Masks a New Generation. I've actually run two campaigns of that. I've run some Monster of the Week. I've done, uh, what else? Uh, Tales from the Loop. Uh, I've done some Fate. Uh, something else I'm not thinking about. Oh, Call of Cthulhu, done that as well. There's a few of them I've done. I think there's something else in there I've run too. I'm going to start running a, an actual Japanese RPG next time I pick up most likely called Tenra Banshu Zero. I've only owned a copy of the game since the early 2000s. I had to import it from Japan. Um, took a while to translate it. But I have a translated version of it now. But Hello, Grant. How are you? I uh, didn't want to do that. Eh. Eh. You're just doing eh. I can respect that. It's kind of a dreary day here, so. I'm having fun with it. Oh, thank you. Yeah, the um, I used a lot of uh, photo reference and things to get it right. try to make my backgrounds to be kind of elaborate and highly detailed because I like drawing my characters very stylized, so. Hey, Efrain. How's it going? Efrain, I got a... If 
friend request from you on Facebook. I thought we were already friends. So I'm just making sure that that was actually sent by you. No comment. Save check. It's looking good. Gotta finish the rest of her Tempest Steel Blade. The sword that she has is kind of interesting because it's uh, the scabbard is solid. Like this is all basically solid. Uh, this is not hollowed out like a cane sword would be. Um, that'll be a bit of a difference in the design of um, on Dave's cover because I hadn't fully developed the sword at that point. Uh, that being said, she's probably just using a cane. She could just be using a cane sword in that sequence. But her sword is more like a lightsaber. It's not an energy blade per se. It's actually physical. Um, but the blade extends out of the hilt. Basically, I want to be able to draw fancy lightsabers. Uh, is it going to be in color? The cover is going to be in color. The comic itself is going to be black and white. Uh, mainly because I don't want to take my time to color it. And I can't afford a colorist. So I'm going with the staple with manga of um, being black and white. And I'll do color covers. Yeah, yeah, it definitely saves a lot of time and money and stress. I enjoy coloring, but um, not that much. Mm 
finish last minute colors on Beowulf as I watch this. So I watch or really listen to this. Well, yeah, that makes sense. I mean, I'm just happy people are here hanging out and chatting and all that. That's what matters to me. You know, if you're coming here and making comics, then all the better. As I say on a lot of my streams, just shut up and make comics. That will be a t-shirt. Nobody steal it from me. Fine. <laughs> Uh, okay. Let's be my black pills. Where's my paint bucket? There it is. Actually, let's turn the roughy off while I'm doing this so I can kind of fill in certain areas a bit easier. You can use sharpen color. Perfectly fine with that. Well, it's great seeing you, Ethics. Um, uh, I think this was there when I was um, talking with Ben Dunn about doing a um, comic with Antarctic. That this is what I'm going to be submitting to them. Um, this is the cover of issue two. Pages. Uh, how many pages will the comic have in my submission? 24. Um, they want full comic submissions. I laid out 24 pages inside of a week. Um, and I had work, started working on the issue two cover and I figured for the stream, I would ink and do the cover, but this is issue one. Full shot of issue two's cover. And the first story arc will be four issues or thereabouts. My goal is that I'm go I want to be able to tell a that you don't really need to. Um, read the previous issues for the most part to get the full story. It's uh, I'm trying to design it so that's like that's like a benefit that if you read it, but it's not a requirement. That the issues will stand alone in a lot of ways. Yeah, I'm looking forward to really doing this. Uh, I said, I'm not sure how much I want to stream of actually doing the um, the comic itself of drawing it, because uh, I don't know if I really want to spoil it. But um, they'll figure it out.
the uh, the ending of the first issue is uh, very dark. So, damn it. One of these days, I'm going to turn off the um, selection button off of my uh, on my stylus because it drives me nuts when I catch it accidentally. I'm hoping Ben goes for this because that would make me, well, very happy. What are you working on, Nexus? Uh, yes, I have seen. Well, I've seen the. I've been watching the anime. Um, I haven't been reading the rebuild manga, but um, but I have been watching the anime, and I'm completely caught up on it. Very impressed by the new Kenshin. I'm really hoping they do a season two. Okay, what I'm really hoping is they do a season two that gets translated into English. And what it really comes down to is I want season three because I want the revenge arc. The so Jinshu arc should be the. That's the one that everybody wants to see.
think I just found one that does a, that does all this, but actually does it as a cross for its for the brush. But yeah, whatever. That was fun. Yeah, that one just done as a cross. Okay. Yeah, pretty much about every um, Thursday around noonish, I flip on Kenshin and what I flip on Kenshin on Crunchyroll and watch it. Yeah, so my general uh, way I do things is I make sure I check out Ahsoka on Tuesday nights, usually when I get home from running some tabletop RPGs, and um, then I watch Kenshin on Thursdays, around noonish when it drops out for here. Which would make it about midnight Friday, I think in Japan, around there. Actually made a boo boo. Usually I do all my uh, shading and stuff like that on a different layer, but I happen to put it on my ink layer, and I'm not stopping now. So it's the help with it. <sighs> caught a little bit of Dave's stream last night when he had Sean Shen on. Kind of wish I caught a bit more of it, but I was in the middle of doing some stuff. And uh. I've been feeling well lately, so I haven't had a lot of time to devote to watching streaming streams. Yeah, I thought so.
Hey, John, at Part-Time Comics. How's it going? Hope things are going well for you. New character left taboo. Um, well, they should be introducing uh, Yahiko's girlfriend, I believe, in the next arc. So we're coming close to uh, Saito Hajime being introduced. He's technically already been shown, but we're going to get the full intro with Mibu's wolf. Right by it, didn't I? A couple of times. Newsprint. That's a newsprint. Oh, Finch drawings. Oh, right, right. Um, yeah, I gotta. I'm curious to see what they're doing next, so. It will, um. It should be good.
kind of fun. It's like painting with Zipatone. Sometimes think to myself that I should do it classically with Zipatone and get the whole thing going the old-fashioned way. Then I come to my senses. Now, I actually have this as a traditional drawing as well. Um, I did uh, my uh, layouts and art with it tra all traditionally. Uh, well, some of it, I mean, my roughy I did digitally and the backgrounds, I drew all that in digitally because, well, I can get easier straight lines on a computer than I can on, uh, with a ruler. Um, when I do the Kickstarter for this, I'll be um, selling off a um, hand-done version of this, traditional art version of this, along with a few other pieces that are associated with this, where I start, where I start doing some of the um, concepts and stuff from.
think I'm calling the base shade work mostly done. I actually want to get a little bit down here. Hmm. Hey, Judge Rent, how's it going? In a class, so you're lurking. Well, that's fine. Lurk away. Have fun. Enjoy yourself. Probably gonna noodle this forever. I'm trying to get uh, the shading to where I like it. Part of me starting to think I should start streaming at four, not at three.
Hashem. All right. Okay, I think I'm going to call it with that for today. Um, I most likely will hold off till next week to do the coloring work on it. Uh, although I've started a couple of little minor things to get a few ideas, but there. Notice a red tone just kind of picked in on there, but that's to get the death in the city blood kind of vibe. Um, but yeah, so that's basically where I believe I'm going to end it for today. I can easily see myself noodling this thing for like another hour if I wanted to, but probably best to call it so I can start doing the color work and then I can, uh, you know, go from there. And the cool thing is since these, uh, the shadings that I'm doing here is all pressure sensitive, it should pick that up as... Uh, to do the shading when I actually add the color to it. It'll automatically do the tones and everything. Um, when I start doing the gradient maps and everything. So, that should be fun. Uh, again, so that's Stray Cat for issue 2 cover. This is the issue 1. Um, and I will talk with you all later. I um, hope you enjoyed... Guarding with the alley cat on my road to Atlanta, uh, Antarctic. And I'd like to say goodbye to everybody. Bye bye. Mm -hmm.